My name is Evan Markowski, and I've been practicing sculpture for over the past two decades. I've been fortunate enough to receive a commission to make a life-size elephant, which is my current sculpture. I selected a medium that was steel for, for various reasons. For its, it was structurally, it seemed more appropriate, and it also allowed me to incorporate um, chain, which came to me in a pretty euphoric uh, epiphany that chain would both capture the, the wrinkles of what an elephant was and also really do a nice job of articulating the imprisonment that they face being bound by chains. I wanted to make a sculpture that, that captured the highlights and the high points of what, an, what we think of as an elephant. Um, and there were these reoccurring themes in the photographs I was looking at. And there was, you know, these similar high spots where the, where the light, sunlight, would, ca would sort of be reflected off of their skin where it was drawn tight or up high on their body. And then almost there's a, almost a line to them where it started to get darker, and that's where more of the wrinkles started to happen. One of my other self-imposed challenges was that I wanted to make a sculpture that was massive in both its, its physical space it takes up and also its weight. Uh, I would, at this point, I can only estimate, but I think it's probably going to be in about a 5,000 pound range. And I did not want to have something that required every time it had to be moved or set up that it required a crane and, and heavy equipment. So I've made something that is modular, the skeleton assembles and disassembles like a puzzle and once you have the skeleton freestanding then you begin to apply the different layers of the hide plates and from that the chain goes on the head piece goes on um, so that it all it goes together and comes apart like a puzzle with the idea that at some point along the line this could even be an aspect of the performance art that you get to the viewer gets to see it come come together and be disassembled Part of a creative process is learning a lot about oneself and uh, in this particular project there are many aspects of it that I thought would be more difficult and they actually turned out to be easier. Um, but there was the shaping of the thick steel was ex far exceeded my expectations for how difficult it would be uh, and was quite frustrating at many times but I was able to get through it and ultimately get the pieces I was looking for which really translated into a, uh, I feel like a, an exponential development of my metal shaping skills. Being consistent with the theme of chain as a linking device um, and not introducing nuts and bolts and hardware, this concept came about. Um, what I call a, a flesh plate. This is this is more representational of the skin and the hide, but it, so it's built in layers based off of the skeleton underneath it. This right here has, to me, the exact feel of uh, the relative part of, of skin that's on a cow that lives on our on our farm. That she has the same the same feel right there as chain. So you have that that. Um, relative comparativeness to steel and flesh in this, in this case, or steel and hide. One of the things I strive for visually in this piece is that I wanted to, I didn't want to make a sculpture that was anatomically correct, and that's obvious in whenever you're making something that's abstract. But I really focused on getting bone structure and proportions and pose as lifelike as I possibly could so that it would free me up to be able to explore more abstract aspects within that anatomical construct. It was a, it's an interesting process in that when I decided to make the departure from my original plan, which was an aluminum, kind of a pop art looking sculpture, um, it, you know, I had seen, I had seen in, in my head, saw the images of this, that this was, it was blurry and, but there was enough detail to go with it and to start 
designing and fleshing it out. Um, but as I said, you know, those initial images are, are blurry and there's not all the detail. But as the time goes by and you begin to connect the dots, more things fill in. And those, those initial thoughts and ideas are becoming a reality before me. And it's, it's, it's kind of trippy to, to have seen something in my head now um, a year, a year and a half ago and is seeing it materialize right before us. Vermont PBS, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpbs.org.